All right, and we're back. We are here to um, take a look at my short wheelbase DR10 project that I have been working on. I started this project about nine months ago, and this is as far as I've got it so far. Um, I had a hard time figuring out what I wanted to do with the paint scheme, so it took a while. Summer went by. Now it's snowing, and it's time to start doing some paint work again. And so I finally figured out a paint scheme, got re-energized to finish this project. And let's just go over um, what we've done to it so far. So this is a uh, DR10 build kit that I built from the ground up. Um, I will put a link in the description below for the initial build. I built it as box stock and then... I also did another video when taking it apart and installing all the upgrades that we've done so far. So right now, at this point in time, this is a DR10 build kit. It doesn't come with a body, wheels and tires, or anything. I solely bought this for the project of doing the short wheelbase uh, Proline Pinto body. I thought it was kind of cool. The whole theme behind this was to build a short wheelbase wheelie, um, a short wheelbase wheelie car that can pull a wheelie for a long distance because of its short wheelbase um, is what I did and I can see in my other two videos um, this chassis is shorter this is the same chassis as the RB10 buggy so it's about an inch and a half shorter from center of the center of the wheel to center of wheel um, we built it the way it was as kit then we tore it apart I upgraded the shocks to the threaded team associated ones Instead of buying the threaded team associated kit, is what I did is just bought the bodies, the rings, and a couple other things. It ended up being about $60 cheaper to do it that way than buy the, the shock kits, which the shocks are like 60 bucks a piece. So that ended up being cheaper. We got the Exotech aluminum servo mount. Uh, we got the Exotech bell crank system, the Exotech um, steering rack, we got the Exotech um, front aluminum bulkhead. We went and headed with the Exotech front bumper, which is aluminum carbon fiber. Very nice looking piece. Way more protective than the original one. And it comes with the foam bumper. And then these are Traxxas. Um, these are Traxxas body mounts that you can extend it up. So we're not using the stock body mounts. I wanted the uh, body mouse to be further out um, toward the edge of the body to help hold it up a little bit better. We also have the uh, Drag Race Concepts carbon fiber ESC mount. Um, Drag Race Concepts uh, axis front and rear wheels and um, axis belted tires. Fronts are not belted. The rear tires are belted and they're the softer compound with a nice insert. Castle Creations, Copperhead 10 ESC, and a 3800 kV motor for now. I know this is not a competition drag setup. That is not why I'm building this. I'm not planning on racing this seriously or anything. There's no drag competitions close by me. Um, if I happen to go to one, this would be fun to just try, but it's probably not gonna be competitive considering its size. Um, and the rear end isn't completed yet. I'm going to shorten up the, the wheelie bar a little bit so we can get a little bit better uh, angle on the wheelies so it'll come up a little bit more. Something adjustable. We're also going to do the Drag Race Concepts um, rear body mount. Rear body mount piece that comes back about an inch. That'll get it further back into the body where I want it. I haven't done that yet, but that's where we're at with this build so far. Oh, we're also running Fataba radio system. Um, yeah, but that's where we're at. This car hasn't been ran. It's just been sitting on a shelf waiting for its paint. So you can see this is the Proline Ford Pinto body. I think it's a 72. I like the look of this body, not because it's the most sporty, because it's a unique body. Everybody's running, you know, this is, this is a, something that's unique kind of gives it a little bit different look uh, give you that willy kind of that willy thing we're going to you can see i've kind of laid out i cut some some masks with the cricket still got a few more to do as i pull layers off of the 
liquid mask. We use Biddy Design liquid mask. Not sure if Biddy Design liquid mask is my favorite. I think I might prefer the Spastics liquid mask. Um, we're also gonna have a big old blower sticking out. Gets mounted from underneath just to make it look more ridiculous. Something like that. So that's gonna get painted up and it's decaled. And yeah, so in this video, we're gonna paint this up and get one step closer to having this thing ready to rip. Unfortunately, we probably won't be ripping it until the weather gets warm again. All right, we're gonna time-lapse this paint. Um, as you can see, you need, you're gonna wanna, I'll flash back, we're gonna wanna go ahead and clean and scrub the body. Um, make sure this stuff works pretty good. I spray it on, scrub it out with a soft sponge, and then anywhere that there's not a window, you can take a Scotch-Brite or the Scotch-Brite that's on your scour pads around your sink, and you're gonna wanna scrub the areas where there is not clear windows. If you scratch the window area, you're gonna see scratches when the body's all painted. So keep the scuff pad away from the edges of the windows and just scratch around the edges of where it's gonna be painted. Stay away from your clear window areas. Dawn, plain Dawn Original is what I always use. I use a Mr. Clean scrub brush because it does put micro scratches in the plastic. You don't wanna scratch here. Um, for a body like this, I think that'll be fine. If you're doing a basher body, you should lightly scotch bright the inside of the body. It really gets the paint to uh, adhere better. Put in your original masks. That just helps, you know, cover up the windows where they are and then you can cut them bigger, the liquid mask bigger. I use spread the liquid mask inside of the body with a brush. A lot of people do um, spray it, but I haven't, I haven't really done that. I think you need to have a specific gun just to spray it. And we're gonna do, so we're gonna start with a dark color first and work our way from there. And I think it's gonna look pretty cool when it's done. Here we go. Okay, we've been painting um, with Proline paints, and what we've been doing is painting the darkest color first, which there isn't really any dark colors on this car, necessarily, except for this uh, pewter, metallic pewter. Um, it has uh, some gold in it, as you can see. Both sides are looking pretty good, but uh, we made a bit of a mistake. I had a brain lapse, whatever, wasn't thinking straight. So you lay down a few even coats of the metallic pewter. It's still fairly transparent, so you gotta back it with something. So I like to back it with the aluminum. It adds a different, um, a little bit more prismatic color to it and it takes a little bit of the gold out so you get a little bit more, a little bit more silver, a little less gold. It's looking really good, and this was supposed to be on both sides and on the hood. But you can see, I made a mistake. And I'm glad that I made the mistake on the hood. Can you see the blotchiness and how it looks really uneven? Well, for some reason I decided, I, th I thought that I had backed another body I did with the white after I did the metallic pewter, the aluminum, and then did white. The white completely just went right through. I mean, look at this. Pretty much looks ruined. You can see it's like 
so much wider here than here. It's very blotchy, which I was spraying really even sprays. So I don't know why the white did that, but it made a hideous color. The hood is basically, it's not ruined. I don't think. I can fix it. The good thing is, is the main part of the body that I was going for with the Pinto logos look good and the, I needed to back it with black. The black adds depth and it doesn't, I don't know, I, I, I don't explain how this looks so bad and uneven. The black looks perfect, but this hood turned out wrong. So the way we're going to end up fixing this is we're probably going to end up uh, painting this particular part from the top side. We may just end up going and doing this with the flat black with the silver outline like the rest and leaving just the bronze on the sides. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do, but I still think this is fixable so I haven't completely ruined it. And after waiting 10 months to paint this body, I'm pretty bummed out. But we'll see if we can get it back on track where we want it. You can see that that color looks really good back in black. So, yeah, we need to address the hood. We can either use, paint it on top, we can flat black it. There's a few things we can do with this area. We can decal it. I mean, there is some options to fix it, but the paint part, what I was looking for is kind of ruined. Hopefully we can fix it. So in this video, we'll find out if we can fix it. So we got to put a little bit more black on the uh, sides because the next color we're laying down is a red and red bleeds through everything really easy that's the next darkest color nice even now I am using a master airbrush the master airbrush has been really good to me i've done a lot of really cool paint jobs i'll show a little preview of some of the ones that i've done but it does have a tendency to do things that i'm not happy about um, i wouldn't say it's necessarily just the brush but the water-based paints have a tendency to dry a lot quicker than some others. But I am getting pretty excited to try a different kind of paint. I've had good luck with the Pro-Line stuff. I feel like the thinness of an enamel paint being sprayed out of an airbrush might be beneficial. And we're gonna, I have already have the I already have the paints I'm gonna paint a short course body. I think I'm going short course, maybe a stadium truck. I have some spastics paints. Uh, we're gonna do some multicolored blues, etc. Kind of excited to try a new paint. The only problem with trying a new paint like enamel is well ventilated area. Um, it has a lot more toxic fumes. than the Pro-Line paints because they're kind of water-based paint. And so I'm a little bummed out about, or I am excited to try something a little different. Uh, thing about the Spastics paints is during the initial uh, development of Spastics paints, I was um, employed by the company that distribute spastics paints long 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 time ago many years ago and so I have tried spastics paints in a paint can never tried their airbrush stuff but it's been many years since I've used any of their stuff and they have made some advancements so I'm excited to use them for right now we're on the pro line had good luck with that I mean look at 
Look at the, this is a, a good learning experience for you guys to see. You have to back certain paints with the correct color. I mean, I'm utterly, I'm totally disappointed that I, I did this, but I'm so glad that I sprayed the hood first because I think it's fixable. The sides still look good. They're exactly what I'm looking for. See that gold popping? Kind of some retro. But if you look at the front, it's like, what is good? what the, the white do to the paint? I mean, it totally just like ruined it. Can't back the white, can't back that pewter and aluminum with white. It's a big mistake, but I think we can fix it. If we can't, I'm buying a new body. I'm going to start over. I'm doing the same paint scheme. I'm just going to do it right. For now, we're going to see if we can fix it. thinking uh, the process, overthinking how detailed I wanted to make it, and color choice. And yellow was never one of my top choices, but I think it's, uh, it's a goofy looking drag car. I'm trying to make it a race, uh, like a really, trying to make it a uh, Kind of a wheelie machine that's why we went the short wheel base the pinto body is a little goofy it's not everybody's first choice so it has kind of a unique look to it and uh all in all i think it turned out pretty good first of all big mistake i made as i showed in the video this front area here around the blower um, that area i backed it with the incorrect color it bled through and completely ruined it. But I think I got lucky I didn't spray the sides first. Proline Metallic Pewter Paint, this one here. It is a very nice color, but I like to back it with some silver. 
and then you can kind of get a little bit of the gold out of it so you can see some silver you can get some gold uh, but you got to back it in black I accidentally backed this piece in white and they ruined it um, and you've seen in, the, you've seen in the picture so I had to come up with a plan to fix it only way to really fix it was one do a decal over it which would have basically just blacked it out I was no way going to match this color so I ended up deciding to cut the overspray film uh, around it match the lines perfectly around and then sprayed the color on top now you can see it's a little bit more matte and being on the surface it gives you this a little bit of a shadow but it actually turned out really sweet compared to what we had going on with the mistake I made. Um, so we did a black, we did a black base first, silver, uh, the aluminum, proline aluminum over that on this area. Then we did the metallic pewter over the top. The color is the exact match to the sides. You just don't get the glossy effect. But with the blower being in the middle of it, you can't see it that much. Another mistake I made was trying to figure out which color to back the aluminum with because after I made the mistake on the white um, I decided to try something different so I backed the aluminum color, the silver stripe, with a primer gray that they have and it turned out really sweet on the sides but I did the same primer gray on the blower and the blower didn't turn out as sparkly as I wished it would have but because it's backed against this copper it still has a pretty you know nice metallic look to it um, turned out pretty good the only thing i need got left to do the blower is to find the, the decals that go on it and the last mistake that i made was i made masks specifically to go behind the paint just like the pinto and it was gonna the the ford was going to be painted the lead foot um, driver name and the 460 on the hood was all supposed to be painted in white on the body. Uh, I guess with fixing some other stuff, I got mixed up and uh, just started spraying yellow. And after two coats of yellow, I realized I forgot to put on the decals under or the masks underneath. So that wasn't the too too big a deal. I really wished it would have been painted on. It, you know, it gets into that glossy you can see um, these are actually decals that I cut on my Cricut same size they were going to be and so it's an actual decal vinyl on the outside of the body it turned out okay I mean it's not terrible um, I think it's going to be good this car is basically it's winter time right now and it's painting time it's been snowing the last week and it's like five degrees outside so this this car is not going down the road anytime soon as soon as the weather warms up again in the spring probably going to take it out and run it but for now it's just going to be a uh, uh, shelf clean i uh, got a few more things to do to it still got to get that rear body mount exotech body mount or the drag concepts not sure which one a couple more aluminum pieces just to go with the theme of fixing it up another nap it's done. I will say that I am happy with the way the paint job turned out, considering the mistakes I made. Because I thought I had completely ruined it. But all in all, my lines turned out pretty straight. Sometimes my cut lines can, can be horrible. Um, my cut lines turned out pretty good. They're all pretty nice and straight, which, you know, there's always a few wibble wobbles here and there. But it's such a tiny car, can't get too picky. But all the, the lines turned out nice and straight. And all in all, I think this body's going to be fine. I'm going to... So I just need to decal the blower, tint the window, get the rear body mount on, and it's done. So the next time you're going to see this car is going to be uh, probably six months from now. And that'll be our first run. And that's it. Hope you liked the video. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't get all of the footage of every paint color. I kind of like to do that. Some people want to see you know, the layers or the, you, the process of doing the paint. I kind of enjoy doing them, but painting is hard to film because it's extremely time consuming. And then when I started making some boo-boos, well, at the end, I just kind of give up and just got it done. Anyway, guys, uh, like, subscribe, and share. 
Um, let me know what you think of my paint scheme, um, good or bad. You know, it's all up to you guys. I know it's not the most preferred body, but it does look pretty cool. And uh, thanks again.